Coming into Football Manager as a new player can be pretty daunting. There's a lot to learn, a lot to do, and always a lot going on. In this video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to do on your very first day in your new job before you hit continue for the first time to make sure you are in the best possible position to have a successful save. Hello folks and welcome to another FM23 tutorial here on the channel. It's actually the second in what I guess is a mini-series. Um, I previously did a video showing you how to set up a brand new game. I'll link to that down in the description below. This one picks up where that video left off. So you've got the game set up. It's your first day in the new job and you don't know where to start. You don't know what to do. So if you are a new FM player, this is going to get you set up, ready to roll in your new save in the best possible way. And if you think that is something that is useful to you, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video for me. It will encourage me to do more of this football manager guide kind of stuff. And of course, if you are new, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. There's going to be lots more content like this on the way, as well as my daily Let's Plays. I stream regularly on Twitch. There's there's plenty of Football Manager content for you to get stuck into. So make sure you stick around for that because, oh, we have fun. We have lots of fun. But here we are in the save, exactly where we left off from our um, video where we were setting up the save. We're manager of Arsenal in the Premier League. We chose Arsenal because it's a team I'm very familiar with from real life. It's it's my Premier League team, not not my proper team, my Premier League team. Uh, so I already have a, a good starting point, a rough idea of what I need to do at Arsenal. And I would always recommend for your first job in Football Manager, your first team that you manage, pick a team that you're familiar with, pick the team that you support, because then you'll already have an idea of things like what kind of tactic you could play, what kind of players work well in what positions. Football Manager is a very well-researched game. If a player is good and good at a specific thing or a specific role in real life, there's a very good chance the same will apply to football manager. So in those early days when it is all the real players at the real teams, um, a little bit of outside knowledge can go a long way to helping you get up and running in the game while you learn how to recognise the in-game stuff that will help you as you move on into the future. So when you load up for the first time, this is the screen that you get. Um, I would recommend first place you go to is the inbox and just check what emails you've got because these will give you a very good guide for what you should be focusing at before you even hit continue for the first time. So you get confirmation of your new contract. And the first thing it asks you to do is set up a tactic. Now, I would suggest before you set up a tactic, you need to get an idea of what players that you've got. Now, if you have started with your team that you support, You'll, uh, you'll be in a much stronger position than if you've started with a team you've never heard of. Uh, this is what the tactic screen will look like when you first go into it. Uh, not the tactic screen, the squad screen, because uh, you won't have my custom view. If you want the custom view, as soon as Steam Workshop becomes a thing on the launch of the game on the 8th of November, you can go on there, search for Lelujo squad view, and then you can just import it into your game. And it does give you a little bit more detail on this screen. So I'm going to leave this on and assume that you went to get it. Um, but you can do the same kind of thing on here. It has the same information, just slightly less of it, not arranged in as useful a way. But if you have a look at your uh, at your squad, these players in purple are the ones that are loaned out. They're not currently available to you at your club. So just for ease of getting everything on one screen, the first thing I'm going to do is get them down into my under-21 squad, basically so that they're out of the way when I'm trying to decide what I want to do tactically. So we've now got our first team players that are at the club and available for us to use immediately. And then I'm going to go over here where we've got these ability and potential star ratings. Uh, ability take, is all about how good a player is currently and believe it or not, potential is how good they could end up being. So I'm going to sort this column or sort these columns in order of ability because I want to build a tactic around getting the best out of my best players. So according to this, my two, my three, sorry, four star players, Martin Odegaard, Bakaya Saka, and Gabriel Jesus. And then we also have this column that tells us what their best position is. So the key thing for my tactic, I want to play my best players in their best position. So Odegaard as an attacking midfielder, centre, uh, Saka, attacking midfield right, and Jesus as a striker, which to me, that's already screaming 4-2-3-1. There's not many other tactics that allow you to play an attacking centre mid, an attacking right winger and a striker. 
I mean, we could we could play around with some kind of weird hybrid nonsense, but this this is this is a, a video for people who've never played the game before. Let's keep things simple. Um, so I've now got in the back of my head four two three one, which I am going to take with me into the tactics creator in a moment. The other thing I want to do before creating my tactic is just check in on my club vision and also my supporter confidence just to see if there's any particular gameplay styles that are important to the board or the fans because if they are then I want to be able to incorporate those looking at this the board are just happy with results they don't care how I get to the results the supporters though are saying they want me to play attacking entertaining football so again that's making me think okay we've got a 4 2 3 one they want attacking, entertaining football. It even explains on here a little bit more about what they mean. So for attacking football, specifically, they want a philosophy which is expected that the team will have a high goals to game and shots to games ratio. And then for entertaining football, I don't know if there is a definition for that. Play expansive and attacking football to keep, uh, to keep the fans entertained. So with all that information in mind, and I mean, if you still don't feel like you've got enough, you can go into the squad planner and get an assistant report, which will even break down even more what your squad is good or bad at. Particularly useful if you're managing a team that you're not familiar with from real life. Um, and you can, again, get a, ni a few nice tips out of this to get an idea of where their strengths are. Um, so uh, it looks like our goalkeeper is particularly good. There's lots of good stuff going on with our goalkeeper. And um, we've got a high flair team with good teamwork. Um, we've got good good uh, good uh, de depth in our defence. So we've got lots of options playing in defence. I mean, we've got a few good dribblers, some decent long shots. So quite a nice, skillful, technical team. Lots of stuff like that coming up on our strengths. What we're less good at, finishing, not ideal. Positioning, tackling, strength, jumping. So, so all the more physical stuff we're not so great at. So we want to emphasise the technical over the physical in a 4-2-3-1, in an attacking and entertaining way. Easy. Right. Luckily, the game helps you as well. So you go into the tactics screen, and you can see straight away, you've got these thumbs-ups next to three different tactical styles that the game thinks will suit the kind of squad that we've got. And uh, look, based on what we already know, they probably are the right choices as well. Control possession gives you a little bit of detail as well. So aims to dictate the play, patiently waiting for openings. That's going to play into the uh, the skillful technical players that we've got. Don't know if that's going to be attacking enough if we're patiently waiting for openings. Um, Tiki Taka dominates possession, relentless pressing, and patiently waiting for openings. Um, again, not sure patience is the right thing. I'm also not entirely sure how well we're going to do relentless pressing because of the uh, because of the lack of physicality we've got in the squad. And but I don't think there's going to be a perfect system for us. Vertical tiki taka again dominates possession, which the others do as well. It's got that relentless pressing in again, but this time we've got an emphasis on moving the ball forward. I think is the way that sentence finishes. So we've got a decision to make here. Do we want to avoid the pressing? So avoid our weakness because we know physicality is a weakness. If we want to avoid the weakness, we'd go for control possession. If we want to focus in on really going for what the fans want, um, we'll do the vertical tiki tacker because it emphasizes more of the attacking based parts of play. So I'm going to ignore the weaknesses in the squad and just go with a vertical tiki tacker. It gives you a little bit more information of exactly what that means here. If you get to this point and you don't actually like some of what you're seeing here, you can always go and pick one of the other ones. That's fine too. But we'll go with a vertical tiki tacker, um, which. It's, I mean, it's going to give us the, the style of play, nice, entertaining, attacking football, and it's going to suit our technically gifted players. So we're going to choose that system. And then within that, we want to choose our formation. Um, the game is recommending a 4-3-3. The problem with the 4-3-3 is we've already identified we've got Martin Odegaard, whose best position is here as an attacking midfielder. So we actually probably want to go with the original plan of doing a 4-2-3-1 because then we can have Jesus, Odegaard, Saka, best three players in their best positions. So we'll hit confirm and there we have a tactic. And from there, I don't know why they've put them in as defensive midfielders. I think we probably want them as normal centre mids. We can leave them as defensive mids. 
I mean, these are the things that you can tweak and play with as you go. Because this is your basic tactic. Um, I'm probably going to push my mentality up a little bit because we want to play that attacking football. You can tweak any of these bits that you maybe don't like the sound of. For example, we know Saka, who's going to be on the right, is one of our best players. So you could decide to emphasize playing down the right hand side, for example. There's lots of stuff you could experiment with on here. But initially, I would say initially, just to get a tactic in for you to start planning your summer around, I'd use one of the presets, not tweak it too much, get playing some games and tweak it based on what you're seeing in the match engine. So now we've got our tactic. I'm going to hit selection advice, which will give us a rough idea of who our best players in each of those positions are. Um, you can tweak the player roles to suit the player if you want. So, for example, Gabriel Jesus, um, he can play as a deep line forward, but he's probably better as an advanced forward or a complete forward. So you can change that around if you want to change that around, or you can just leave everything as it is. Again, Martinelli, just as suited to being an inverted winger as he is an inside forward, as he is an advanced playmaker. So it depends on how you want to be playing the game. Um, you can certainly leave it exactly like that, and that gives you an idea of who your players are and who you've got who's good in different roles. So now we've got our tactic selected. We go back to the inbox because we've done this first thing that came out of the inbox. We're then going to get some stuff about the supporter profile, which we've already gone and found anyway, because I, I think that information is actually useful to have before making the tactic like we saw before. Again, with Club Vision, we've already had a look at this because it helps with selecting the tactic. Um, and then we've got pre-season preparation. It's just telling us that we've got a, a, a training camp thing set up. Um, we can have a look what injuries we've got. So we know Smith Rowe is currently injured. A reminder of the rules around selecting a squad for the Premier League. And then letting us know that the transfer window is open. That's the inbox done. There's a few more things, though, I am definitely doing before I hit continue for the first time. Especially if you're a new player. Because there is so much overwhelming stuff in Football Manager. So much to do at the start. A really key thing I think you need as a new player is to delegate some of the jobs that maybe you don't need to be able to do straight away. So I'd come into the staff screen, go to responsibilities, and just work through each page of this and delegate stuff that you either don't know how to do yet, um, don't have any interest in doing. I delegate a lot initially. Um, so for example, as a brand new player, you you need to learn the tactic system. Um, you need to learn how to pick your best players for your team. You're probably going to want to get stuck into transfers fairly early on, so you need to learn the scouting and recruitment system. I would say lower down your list of priorities is likely to be hiring and firing staff, uh, taking training, stuff like that. So initially, you can just delegate that stuff and then either leave it delegated forever if it doesn't interest you or maybe loop back around when you're a little bit more used to some of the other elements of the game and come back and learn some of these other things. So... I would go through here and delegate all of this stuff, um, all of the staff recruitment stuff, just delegate it to a member of staff, confirm that. Likewise, staff contract renewals, I'm delegating all of that because I really don't need to get bogged down in this when I'm learning the game. If you particularly want to choose your own assistant manager, there's nothing to stop you doing that. Just because you've delegated this, you can still go into your list of staff and see who you've got. And if you don't like the look of uh, Barry Solon, for example, you can click on him and you can still terminate his contract. You can still go on the staff search screen and go and find different members of staff if you want. Uh, but by delegating the responsibility for it to somebody else. It means if you don't do that or you're not sure where to go or you miss something out, there's someone there filling the gaps for you, cleaning up cleaning up behind you and making sure everything gets done. Um, likewise, with scouting, you can choose how involved you are or aren't. I'm delegating all of it initially and I'll come back and I'll come back around and pick some bits out of it if I want to. Um, transfers, I do want to do. Um, I really enjoy doing the transfers. I don't necessarily need to find development loans for my own young players, though, so I'll delegate that. Um, if you want your director of football to go and do some transfers for you, um, you can you can get them to do that. I'm not going to, but it's certainly there as an option. If you just want to worry about picking the team, doing the training, if you're the opposite of me and you want to do that side of the game, you can delegate the transfers off to somebody else and let someone else do the transfers for you. Media stuff, I'm just going to delegate the whole lot. Press conferences bore me. 
Um, if you want to do them, feel free to do them. I don't feel like they add very much to the game at all, um, other than taking up a lot of time and not really having any impact on anything in the game. So I just delegate those and never think about them again. Likewise, training, I'm going to delegate because I don't personally find much satisfaction from training. I'd much rather go out and buy a good player than develop one of my own. You might well be the opposite, in which case you know what to do. Delegate the bits that you don't fancy doing. Um, likewise, opposition instructions, I will delegate. Well. You've got an explanation of what all these are as well, so you can decide for yourself what you're going to delegate. Um, but I am going to do my own touchline instructions, and I would suggest if you're a brand new player, you carry on, you manage your own friendly matches because you can use that to experiment with tactics, experiment with players. I usually delegate it because... I've played the game a lot and don't necessarily need to do that. Um, but as a new player, I would recommend that you lead your own friendly matches. Another really important thing as a brand new player, as you go through the first couple of days, the first couple of times you hit continue, you are going to get tutorials come up. And I recommend you do them. I know when I was told about doing tactics, I just went and created the tactic. Um, but as a new player, you will have the option on here to do the tactic creation tutorial do it. The tutorials are great. And if you don't go through a whole tutorial, for example, the tutorial for training and decide that you didn't understand it, you didn't enjoy it, you don't see the point of it, you can still then delegate it afterwards, but definitely do the tutorials initially because it does help you learn all those different elements of the game. But there's one more thing that I would do before hitting continue for the first time, and that is start to get a feel for the transfers that you might want to do. So head to the finance tab, and have a look what our budget is. So we've got £26 million of transfer budget and a little bit of spare in our wage budget as well. So as for a club like Arsenal, that probably translates to one player. But what might that one player be? That's where the squad planner comes in. Because from here, you can get an overview of your squad and get an idea what your squad depth is. You can do that position by position by clicking through. To get a nice overview as the new manager, it's probably easier to click this screen and get an idea of what depth you've got in each position. So from here, it lists the top three players in each position and what their star rating is in that role. So you can see at fullback, we don't really have a third fullback on either side. And um, that might not be an issue for you. Two on each side might be enough. The squad, the, the team report screen before did say we've got good squad depth in defence. I'm not necessarily going to argue with that. Uh, having Cedric as the as the backup to the first two on each side might mean a fullback could be handy, especially because Ben White is also on your list of centre backs. So if you get an injury to Ben White, you're then in a situation where you don't have a backup centre back, you don't have a backup right back, and that's not ideal. So there's a potential gap, maybe for a right back, maybe for a centre back. And um, if you want to see how deep it goes beyond just the top three, you can click on it and it brings you back that position on screen. So you can see, obviously, you've got Rob Holding in there as well. But they're not much behind him. But on the whole, defensively, this squad is pretty solid. As the central midfield, we might have a little bit of an issue. Um, Zinchenko, if he's going to be playing left back, um, we are a little bit light in central midfield. So we can, for example, for this left-sided centre mid, we can take Zinchenko out because we know he's playing left back. And then we've only got Partey, Xhaka, Lukonga and El Elneny. Um, and then same again on this side, if we take Zinchenko away, we've only got those four players who can play in that role. And unfortunately, Granite Xhaka has been hammered a little bit in the ratings compared to how he is in real life. As has, I mean, to be fair, El Nenny and Sambi Lakonga. Nobody's really great in this defensive midfielder role. We've got a few who can do the playmaker. Party Xhaka, both pretty comfortable doing that. Um, but Lakonga and El Nene, aren't, El Nene aren't necessarily Premier League quality, although Lakonga has got potential to maybe get there. But maybe a central midfielder, probably leaning more towards this role, the DM role, rather than the deep line playmaker role. This looks like a weakness. Um, and then looking through the other positions as well, if we ignore Jesus on the left wing, because we know he's going to play striker, uh, uh, Saka's going to play on the right wing. You've then got Martinelli, Smith, Rose, and Chenko. You've still got decent depth here. Um, same on the right hand side. You've got Saka, Jesus, Zinchenko, Martinelli, Vieira, Smith, Rowe. Got lots of wingers. Um, attacking midfield. If Odegaard's unavailable, you've still got Zinchenko, Smith, Rowe, Vieira who can play there. But up front, maybe there's a little bit of 
a lack of depth because if Martinelli's playing on the left, Marquinhos is and George Lewis are too young. You've only really got Jesus and Nketiah. So I would suggest centre forward, maybe centre mid, are the play are the areas that you want to be looking at. Um, and once you've identified the positions that you might want a player in, you can then hit create new focus, and that will add you a scouting focus for that position. Your scouts will go out and look for players in that position. Um, so ability-wise, you probably want someone who's three stars of current ability because that will make them better than Nketiah, but not necessarily at the level of Jesus um, with potential ability to just improve a little bit, maybe. Hit that, confirm that. So we've now got a striker. And if we want a DM as well, we can do the same thing here. And we want three stars of current ability, three and a half stars of potential, someone who can play as the DM. And that, uh, and that scouting focus is then created for you as well. And that's about it. Before you hit continue for the first time, there are other things you can go and look at, tabs we've not touched. Um, so you could look at dynamics to get an idea of um, how happy your players are, what your cohesion is, um, who your team leaders are, all the morale kind of stuff. But I don't think you necessarily need to spend much time here on the first day. Data Hub, you can't touch at all until you've played some games. Uh, training, I've not touched at all yet. Feel free to play around with it. But like I say, we're delegating that initially. Likewise, the medical center, I don't think you need to spend a lot of time here. Um, schedule just shows you who you're playing and when. Competitions shows you which tournaments you're going to be playing in. Scouting and transfers, we've started to touch on a little bit, um, but that will come in more as you start getting some of those initial scout reports back. We've only just created the scouting focuses. We've not even had our first recruitment meeting yet. That will come up in your inbox in a few days. So for now, I wouldn't worry about rushing out and trying to sign players now because the game will lead you into doing that um you can nose around the club info the finances all that kind of stuff or look in the development center to see what young players you've got up and coming so we can see we've got an up and coming goalkeeper who's really our only decent youth prospect at the moment you can look through the actual youth teams and really have a look at who we've got um but again i wouldn't get too bogged down in that initially um, and then you're ready to hit continue so with that, we come to the end of this video. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see me do next with these guides. I can carry on playing through the first week, first couple of weeks, uh, but let me know in the comments, are we going too slow? Are we going too fast? Do you want more detail? Is there anything off the back of this that you think deserves its own one-off video? This whole FM guide series, I'm very much happy to be guided by what you're looking for as new players. It's been 25 years since I was a new player to this game series, so... Lots has changed. Oh, lots has changed. And I could do with you guiding me on what you want guidance on. Uh, but if you have found this video useful, please leave a thumbs up on it for me. It really does help this slightly different kind of content on the channel hold its own amongst all the Let's Plays. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And thank you very much for watching.